Welcome and thank you everyone for tuning in to our latest economic outlook report with a focus on pressing economic signals most impacted by COVID-19. This conversation is taking place on Monday, March 23rd, 2020. To begin today's update, it is essential to recognize the unfortunate impact that the coronavirus health crisis is having on lives around the world. We want to ensure that as a company, we acknowledge the effects that the coronavirus has on human beings, as well as the immense complexity in combating and stabilizing the spread of the virus. Previdere provides economic-based predictive analytic solutions that power intelligent forecasting. Our mission remains focused on helping businesses understand the economic landscape to make the most informed decisions. We hope that our efforts provide comfort while we all continue to navigate this unprecedented time. Please welcome Previdere's Chief Economist, Andrew DeGay. Uh, Andrew, these updates are now weekly and at times multi-weekly events. Uh, so thank you for taking a moment from your hectic schedule to assist us with better understanding um, of developing economic challenges resulting from the health crisis. It must be a challenge from an economist seat to provide insights responsibly considering the pace of incoming information and the potential economic ramifications information may or may not have on global and domestic economies. Thank you, Nicole. Yes, I, as we look at this crisis versus other previous recessions or uh, global events, uh, there are some similarities, but mostly differences. And uh, this makes it a very unique uh, situation to, to diagnose, uh, but with new data coming out daily and trying to uh, put all these facts into contexts and outlooks, uh, we're, we're trying our best to provide our, our, our customers with some real-time information and latest thinking on uh, this ever unfolding and changing event. Um, thank you. I appreciate it. I, I'm learning a lot through this, as I know um, other people are. I feel a lot of incoming requests and, and emails to that ilk. Um, so, Andrew, with that, what can you highlight in terms of where we should be focusing our attention, economically speaking? Well, Nicole, it's really going to be about context. So when we look out for our outlook for the next few months uh, and really thinking about beyond that to the next year or so, uh, we are trying to update our analysis um, by putting the United States in context of not, it's not isolated anymore. This is a global crisis and um, every country has their own unique response to the crisis, which is going to have economic ramifications, certainly. Uh, but that the fact you know, here, as we look at the cases since that 100th confirmed case, um, really when things start to spread, um, we see the U.S. is on a very similar trajectory to Europe with about a, a 20 to 30 day lag. Um, and then the same trajectory to what China went through with about a, a one and a half to two month lag. And so as the new data unfolds and the United States is hunkering down, we, we've seen the economic ramifications of this already in China with the, the strong contraction they've seen in their economy in January and February, uh, the strong measures that they had to take, um, and not only in China, but in South Korea and, and other Asian countries. And then, of course, what took, took hold in, in Europe. And so when we look at the magnitude of this, we're talking about the entire northern hemisphere essentially uh, has been in lockdown. China starting to come out of it um, and, and getting things, quote, back to normal. I think the, the new normal in China is going to be a lot different than the past normal. But at least from a health standpoint, the number of new coronavirus cases has been very minimal as of late and that's what we're really going to be looking for when we look towards Europe and hard hit places like Italy or even here in the United States. Can we diagnose this problem? Can we address this um, from a health crisis standpoint and can we bend the curve, the curve of new confirmed cases and at least get um, society back to a somewhat normal functioning state? Right now, we're in the in the throes of this, much like Europe started a few weeks ago and in China a, a few months ago, where everybody is on lockdown. This is going to make very drastic changes to how the economy looks 
over the next few months. Um, and we all know this is true, um, despite the, the real lack of traditional economic indicators uh, to signal this, this type of downturn. Normally, uh, you can look at a series of leading lagging indicators, such as even the last recession. Um, there was many signals a couple years in advance around the housing market that were signaling, hey, this is weakening, oh, it's getting worse, this is gonna have economic ramifications and financial ramifications. With this, it really starts more as a shock, right? And a, a statistical anomaly, if you will, um, it, when you look at a 100 year times, time span. Um, however, the economic ramifications are not going to be just a simple blip. And with the initial thoughts of a V-shaped recovery um, should really be set aside at this point. And we're really looking at an extended downturn uh, with more of, I would call it a U-shaped recovery where it's this is going to leave a mark, right? Businesses uh, are, are going to suffer because of this. The global economy is going to suffer. And so what we need to do is put this in context. When can we see recovery? How strong will that recovery be? And that's a lot of what we're, what we're looking for. I think as we talk about um, the, the, the path forward, uh, what's going on in Asia and, and the fact that we're seeing con some control in South Korea and in China means that there is light at the end of the tunnel that as a society we can get back to normal. Uh, however, there are going to be severe uh, financial and economic consequences to this downturn. I think this will be mostly felt in the second quarter of the year. Uh, however, those effects are going to linger on into the third and fourth quarters. In the U.S., the data is lagging behind. Normally, we can rely on a, either a monthly report on new jobs uh, or even the weekly uh, reports on jobless claims, but even then, the pace of those data releases are not fast enough for us to measure how bad, how severe this is going to be. So we need to look at alternative sources. And fortunately, in a world of big data, there are lots of alternative sources out there. And for instance, we have been kind of keeping track in real time of the magnitude of this by looking at Google Trend searches. Uh, if you look at the Google Trend search in the United States for the term collect unemployment, what you see is that there's been about a 20x surge in the last two weeks in searches for unemployment. Uh, we've heard anecdotal information from multiple states, uh, New York, Oregon, Ohio being some of them, that their websites have been strained because of the amount of people going on and looking to file for unemployment. When we look at the total US weekly jobless claims, it comes out on Thursday, and so all we, all we have is information from a couple weeks ago where there was a 70,000 increase um, versus the week prior. But the key is gonna be what happens with this Thursday's report. It's going to be a bad one. If we look at um, the the historical context of this is what we're seeing is that unemployment is gonna rise at a rate that we have not seen in history, essentially, because of the essentially shutdown of most of the services sector in the US economy. Little tidbits come out from different states um, and you can see here the scale of what's gonna happen um, for unemployment in just you know one or two days you're seeing um, you know anywhere from Kentucky you know 9,000 claims on a Tuesday versus a normal day is 300. Um, so when we look at that for that longer historic context you know it what we're seeing is there's gonna be a significant ramp up in unemployment uh, businesses are going to have a challenge in 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 being able to stay afloat, and we're going to see some real uh, near-term pain. Of course, there are fiscal and federal responses to this, and and the Federal Reserve has come up with a, basically a, a a blank check to try to uh, stimulate the economy uh, through monetary policy and the means that they have available to them. Uh, and I think uh, the, these. It's necessary, right, to some degree that, that the federal policy and fiscal policy step in in a time like this to try to mitigate the blow. Um, this is still not going to mean that this will be painless as, as we move through this. And, and already we're talking about um, estimates of, of GDP in the second quarter being uh, double digits down versus year ago levels. So given that context, um, I think when we talk to our businesses, we're really trying to focus on, you know, what's the second half of the year gonna look like? How, how long will this, 
this downturn last. And what we what we see now as we're we're looking out to the second half of the year and even starting to think about 2021 is that there's going to be multiple new paradigms, right? When the the consumer is going to ch has changed drastically. We entered this time with record low unemployment and near record high consumer sentiment. Consumers on average were happier than they had been before according to most surveys and unemployment was lower than it had been before and we'd, we'd been running about 10 years since the previous recession uh, and, and overall in a somewhat healthy place here in the United States. Um, but now as we look at the consequences of this, what we hope first and foremost is that the health crisis gets contained. And even if we do um, bend our curve of new confirmed cases to reflect more like China and a little less like Italy, that would be a great thing for humanity and obviously the health uh, of citizens in the United States. Um, however, we need, if, if we're thinking about the business ramifications of this, think that as the health crisis subsides, the economic crisis is going to linger on a little bit longer. There's gonna be debts that need to be paid, debts, services, and uh, businesses are gonna take a while um, to recover from this, uh, given that the hit that they're currently seeing. And this is not just gonna be in the United States, really because it spread from Asia to Europe to North America, what we're really seeing is a global economic recession. So, in even those countries that have not seen as severe uh, of a pandemic, think of countries in the Southern hemisphere like Brazil uh, or Australia, they are also gonna be faced with very weak economies over the next couple quarters uh, because of one, the trade relations and the fact that they need healthy trade partners uh, in order to grow their own economies. And then secondly, it's this financial crisis that we're really um, staring staring down the barrel of because you know, what we've seen is that there's been a severe flight to safety. The US dollar has gained uh, and different countries have uh, essentially lost some value in their currency. And uh, a lot of businesses who are carrying heavy debt loads over the past 10 years um, due to the low interest rate environment are now faced with a situation where they're gonna have to carry that debt load um, to an even, great, even greater extent over the next few quarters to um, to cover some of this weak economic climate. So when we talk about the second half of the year, um, our hope and our base, base case is, is that the pandemic will be um, contained um, in the second half of the year. And so society will start to get back to the quote, you know, normal activity. However, when we think about uh, business activity, um, it is likely still gonna be weak and we're still going to see um, conditions not be as bad as the first half of the year, um, but very slow. And mostly because we're gonna be dealing with the economic consequences of what we're going through today to try to mitigate the blow. So a lot of the actions um, from you know federal and fiscal policy, um, we would say are necessary. However, they are not gonna be um, a, a cure-all for the second half of the year. And when we think about um, the extent of this recession, we should be planning on um, about you know, four quarters uh, of, of pretty weak activity, but hopefully um, getting more towards the recovery side in the second half of the year. When we, when we talk about this uh, update or any of our previous updates, what we're trying to do is put things in a, in a broader context of what we're seeing today. Now, I know even if you listen to what we were talking about two weeks ago, the world has changed and our outlooks have changed. Initially, there was more hope of a V-shaped recovery. There was more hope that um, we could control uh, the pandemic and that uh, the economic consequences uh, of the actions necessary to stay healthy uh, would not be that severe. I think what we're seeing now is that the that the reaction to the health crisis is necessarily severe and necessarily puts uh, the global economy in a contraction. Uh, and then it's gonna be about uh, businesses and individuals persevering to get to the other side um, and, and, and come out of this uh, together. So with that, we're continuing to monitor data on a daily basis. We know that in the United States, because of a lot of data lags, there's not a lot of um, near-term economic data from monthly government bureaus uh, that is reflecting just how bad this is, but we're looking at those alternative sources and really diagnosing the fact that 
um, the U.S. economy is, is, in a, is in a difficult spot, as well as Europe, as well as Asia, uh, and we should expect um, a, a global re recession um, with uh, a rather slow recovery um, in the second half of the year. Uh, wow, thank you, Andrew. That was a lot. Uh, really appreciate the assessment. Uh, obviously, unemployment numbers um, being issued are concerning. Uh, you also mentioned federal contributions uh, that are being made, uh, debt load, uh, recessionary contraction globally felt throughout the rest of the year. Uh, a lot going on, and we're really awaiting to see the real-world effects here. Uh, Andrew has already agreed to come back and provide an update um, on some of these uh, items listed. So thank you in advance, Andrew. Uh, we will be in touch as that report is uh, made available. Uh, this concludes this economic update. Our thoughts are with all of you and your families, as well as the many scientists and healthcare providers working uh, throughout this health crisis. Uh, stay tuned for our ongoing announcements as we will be following up updates um, as there are developments. Should you have any questions for our economists working on the changing landscape, please feel free to contact me directly and I will forward your inquiries to the proper party. Thank you, everyone.